Hi, and welcome to another Entrepreneur's Stories, where you know what this is about, not about me, not about Bundle, but about our great entrepreneurs out there. Today, I'm with Jason Stam. I'm gonna allow him to introduce himself because he has a pretty cool role in a very big global business with more than 100,000 employees. But he's gonna share with us what all entrepreneurs do, the tips, the tricks, the challenges. How did it go? How does it go when you're trying to build a business from within? Welcome, Jason. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Well, love having you here. Love being doing like a one-person interview. I've been doing a lot of <laughs> Skype interviews, so this is this is great. Um, can you tell us where do you work, and how did you get here? How did you land here? Yeah. So I'm at AV InBev. Uh, we've got our global headquarters based in Leuven. You know, I landed here really through a lot of just raising my hand and and uh, being in the right place at the right time. Uh, I graduated from Duke with my MBA in 2014, uh, was hired to, to join the global procurement office here in Leuven. So moved out here, did a rotational role for about a year, and uh, uh, a new opportunity came up uh, within the craft beer scene at AB InBev that I flocked to immediately. But part of the deal for taking that role was uh, being willing to join the 2016 internal accelerator that our company was holding called the Z Accelerator. Uh, it was the first time that it had been done, and I hadn't really known much about it, uh, but was fortunate enough to be uh, part of a team of, uh, with three other individuals within the company uh, who were incredibly talented, and we took a concept uh, for using our byproducts to turn it into, into something nutritious. Oh. And uh, you know, fortunately, uh, we, we came up with a really compelling idea, I think, and uh, Things just kind of went from there, and it evolved into a full-time role. So wait, um, so 2016, you get involved in entrepreneurship. Yep. Right, and you're starting to get into the venture here. So you you looked at the byproducts, right? Everything. Yeah. By byproducts, do I understand? Is that the waste? Is that what comes out of the production of craft beer, and what? And then you kind of came up with another solution for it. Yeah, so it, you know, we didn't really think of it as waste. Um, you know, we, we've actually started calling it co-products because we think that there's a lot of value uh, in the raw material that, come, that is left over after the brewing process. So specifically speaking, we made something using spent grain. And just for any of the viewers out there, really quickly, you know, after you're brewing beer with barley, the brewing process, you take all of the carbohydrates out, the starches, uh, to let the yeast uh, feed off of that to get your alcohol. But you're left with high quality protein, high quality fiber, mm. uh, but in a hot, wet uh, mass that tends to spoil very quickly. And we found a way to save that grain, uh, which is actually one of our slogans for the product. Uh, but we've saved the grain and uh, repurposed it for human nutrition. Okay, so it sounds like like a lot of my questions are like, did you have a team, etc. It yeah. sounds like it all kind of stumbled into one because you were in this kind of fast-moving entrepreneurship track, right? Yeah. And did you immediately go into an ideation phase and think, well, let's do something with this co-product, with the, all the byproduct, let's do something. And is that when you kind of came to a solution? Let's use the protein, let's use the fiber that's left over, is that... Yeah, I would say, you know, I think one of the great things about working at AB InBev is that, you know, the, the people there are incredibly smart. And I think the, the strength of, of working with such a, a smart group of people is that these ideas started to develop in different pockets within the company. Um, and as discussions went on, uh, everyone kind of came together and really bought into the idea. Uh, so, so from there, you know, it would turn into a formal project. Within the formal project, we started to ideate, came up with a number of different ideas that we took into the accelerator. Uh, and then from there, it was a matter of getting out of, of the building, of course, uh, speaking to consumers, really understanding what's going on with them and developing a solution uh, and refining the ideas that we had previously come up with to, be, to develop something that was really compelling. So it sounds like you had, validation was extremely crucial to what you were doing. But before you tell me a little bit about sure. validation, because I remember you told me, um, we had a, a conversation, you were telling me about it. Did you have milestones from the get-go when it went into the accelerator where you kind of told, well, let's think of the project in 
18 month format? I don't know. What, how did that work? Did you have milestones to, to adhere to, or was it, you know, no, we, let's go for ideation to validation. How was that process? So the milestones were really all about, um, what we call our seed phases within the accelerator. So uh, seed one is about problem validation. Uh, seed two was about solution validation. And then seed three reaching that was about business case validation. And so within the context of the accelerator, it's a three month program and really you need to be hitting these milestones um, you know, at, a, at a reasonable pace within those three months. After that, uh, we were fortunate enough to get funding from our, our internal investment committee and uh, then we launched into a, a one-year phase of, of continuing to refine the product, test, revalidate, and really make sure things were going well as we were working on the operational side, which was about scale up of the production, building a new facility, um, and proving that we can do this on a large scale versus just something that we had only done in the lab previously. Amazing. And so do you had product validation, solution validation, business case validation, which one would you say was the longest process for you or the longest track you probably had to revisit, learn more from, etc.? I think problem validation was probably, I would say that was definitely the longest one and only in the sense that, you know, it after spending so much time preparing for the accelerator, I think we came in with a lot of ideas in mind for what we wanted to prove out in the accelerator. And it's not until you really are speaking to customers, getting to really be in their shoes that you start to say, okay, wait, maybe these ideas that I had, these, these preconceptions that I came into the accelerator with, maybe I was totally wrong. Mm -hmm. And it takes a while, I think just as human nature to let go of that, kind of let your mind become a blank slate and then revisit uh, what actually are some of the consumer problems that they might be facing and how can you build a solution to meet those? And for those out there trying to build um, consumer validation tracks, do you have any advice? What do you think works? What doesn't work? Because it is, it is tricky. You know, you yeah. have a new product, you got to speak to as many people as possible, right. but you also have to speak to the right people who you probably don't know who they are in the <laughs> beginning and then speak to the wrong people and find out why they're the wrong people. What do you think, what works best? What is your way of doing it? You know, it sounds cliche, but it really is just getting out of the building. I think that was probably the biggest thing that helped our team during the accelerator process was getting out, speaking to tons of different people across age ranges, across uh, you know, gender, demographics, you know, really trying to explore where are their pain points uh, among consumers? And then as you start having these conversations, you start to see, okay, there are trends within this certain demographic, uh, these certain types of people. You, know, you start to develop a personality of what your core, uh, your core adopter is going to look like. And as you start to seek more and more people of those out, and then you start to validate, okay, so these things that I found with this group of people, the more I speak to people within that demographic, the more I start to see that this is something that is not just specific to one or two people, but it's something that a lot of people are, uh, are experiencing. And in that, if that's the case, then I think you know, as an entrepreneur, as an entrepreneur, someone looking to build a new uh, business based on a concept, Finding that core adopter, uh, you know, and, and and seeing that there is something there is, you know, I think is some when you start to say, okay, I need to pursue this opportunity. You're close to the that Eureka moment. I right. think I found our market fit. Yeah, you know, and, exactly. Uh, you exactly. have to chip away. And this is always a sensitive topic in terms of money. Um, were the milestones were they what validated you to get more investment to keep going towards yeah. your venture? Yeah, we've set up a very rigorous uh, process within the company. So those seed phases, you know, it, you're not that you come into the accelerator with the backing of a manager or of, mm -hmm. a, of an organization or department within the company, and you're given seed money to develop the venture. As you go through the seeds one, two, and three, uh, and prove out that there is something, uh, some potential behind this concept, we have to pitch it again to a, a broader investment committee that's composed of our executive board, um, our, invest, our invest, internal investment committee, uh, and then also external investors, and show that we've done the work, we've done the homework, uh, get them excited about it, yeah. and then 
behind that business case validation, we say, okay, we're going to need X amount of money of dollars for the next 12 months. Uh, this is why, and this is how we can be successful if, if, you, uh, if you invest in us. Obviously, and, and, and it worked. Yeah. I mean, um, it seems, but did you stumble upon any roadblocks that you didn't foresee? For example, did you have some uh, senior buy-ins, the people who probably left or changed roles, or did you have people in your team who moved on? And that's always a little bit tricky to keep, you know, everybody rowing in the same direction. No, I think, you know, as an entrepreneur, I think probably a common theme that you find amongst, I'm sure that you've heard in speaking to, to, to people, is that it's all about stakeholder management uh, and taking people along with the journey, the journey that your team is going on. So if you have a team that is bought in, believes in the concept, you really need to make sure that everyone else in the company, uh, quality, legal, finance, that everyone understands the project this was the first time anything like this had been done in the company. And so it was about really understanding uh, that you've got goals and other people have very, uh, maybe not divergent goals, but they don't quite understand the work process and they want to bring you into like the, ter the normal uh, stage gate process. And it's just a matter of kind of finding a compromise to work amongst a disruptive process and a stage gate corporate manage process. And from, a, I guess, one entrepreneur to an entrepreneur, whatever I or E we want to call it, what was your favorite part, your personal favorite part that you love the most about these processes? You know, for me, I think it's constantly dealing with, uh, I think it's, it's really about making people get that same eureka moment that we had. You know, you're out, well, we, are, we were the ones that were out on the streets speaking to consumers, working on the project, uh, you know, from the beginning and building a, a, a product that was going to be compelling. Um, but a lot of people would hear what we were doing and saying, okay, they're just doing something with byproducts. That's strange. You know, we're going to switch back to our core business practice. But when you start to explain the story and start to show people what you've done and how, what you've developed and they see it come to life, especially when you're building a facility uh, like we had to do it, People really start to also believe in the team and suddenly you have, uh, you go from having a group of individuals who are working on a project on the side to having a whole company uh, looking at what you're doing and saying, wow, you know, these guys are onto something really cool uh, and this could be a moment for, for change within the company. I think That's it's very good exactly recognition. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty cool. I have another question for you. So this question was left by a previous entrepreneur. Okay. And the question is pretty powerful because what he wants to know is when did you last in entrepreneurship experience change? I last experience change. Could you be know, personal. I think I think it's at that moment when you recognize you're not really just doing uh, the day-to-day -day work that you were doing before, but you're really you're you're on uh, you're building something. And I think going from building PowerPoints and uh, putting spreadsheets, you know, those are things that we have to embrace as working at a company. But when you uh, take all of these things that everyone has worked together, put presentations on and, and built over a long period of time and you actually come up with a product, I think it's really powerful, not only in understanding what people can do uh, as a team and, and you know, what people can produce, but also personally, it's just amazing to see something that you've worked on and have drawn sketches about and put branding work together, to see it come to life and to put it on the shelf uh, and see people enjoying that product uh, is, is a, a massive moment of change for me personally in my career. Great answer. And what do you think, what kind of skills do you think that makes the entrepreneur slightly different than everybody else? Look at your group of people and you know everybody else in this amazing 100,000 people plus company. What made you guys unique? I think what made us all unique was one, you know, having a firm belief in what we were doing and really a steadfast dedication to making this thing come to life. Uh, but two, and it's very similar to, to that first point, is resiliency. I think you know this is something that we had to do with constantly being told our, the process that we were following wasn't right or that the product that we had wasn't going to work and you have to 
basically say, well, you know, I understand where you're coming from. Thanks for thanks for your opinion, but we have a belief. We're going to get there, uh, and we're not going to we're not going to be stopped uh, for anything. Actually, I'm curious. Do you think you've pitched your idea during that process more than a hundred times? I would say, yeah, far more than a hundred times. <laughs> Pretty sure that happens all the time. In regards to entrepreneurship, is this something you want to keep doing? Are you? Did you? Would you do it again? And do you think this is a calling for you to be an entrepreneur? And yeah, you know, this is a first time I think really throughout my career. I've been in financial services. I've uh, been in the fitness industry. Uh, fall in, fell into beer and have loved the industry, and now I'm building ventures within within the the beer industry. I think just the, the idea of building in, uh, ventures uh, is, is incredibly powerful for me. Like I said, having something that you can take from concept to reality is amazing. And, and I definitely see an opportunity to become a serial entrepreneur or intrapreneur uh, if, if I can keep following these opportunities. That is quite, I mean, I have to add a question, which entrepreneur, Please. intrapreneur, do you see a difference or... The main difference I see is just the resources. I think, you know, working within a corporation and having that chance to build a venture within the corporation, uh, you know, having the resources, having the the technological benefits of working with uh, tons of scientists, like we had the benefit of doing, uh, the financial backing, uh, and really just the global pull of, you know, as you approach suppliers, you could say, you don't have to say, I'm working on a startup that I've that I've you know kind of working out of my garage. I'm working within a large company, and it makes things much easier to move forward from that standpoint. No, fair. No, it's true, and I, t- I totally agree with you. And uh, it is different, yeah. but it does give you you know that help to yeah. face the headwinds. Exactly. My last ask of you is. Um, we're going to pursue finding entrepreneurs, great stories like yours, the challenges they face, the processes they went through. What question could I ask my next interviewee? It's a good question. I think for me, I think it's always interesting in speaking to other people of asking them, you know, if there is anything that they could revisit in some of their entrepreneur uh, activities or in their previous projects, what would that one thing be? Cool. I'll definitely ask that and uh, you'll definitely get to watch that one too after yours comes out as <laughs> well. Uh, Jason, thank you so much for coming thank up here you. today. Um, it's been great learning your venture, uh, knowing that you're still going through it. So there's a lot to do still in the Absolutely. venture that you're now on and we can only thank you enough. No, thanks for having me. It's been great. Thank you. Entrepreneur Stories, everyone. This comes out every two weeks on a Monday. Now, first, if you're watching this on YouTube, you're on Bundle Tube. We also have this on podcast form. If you're on podcast, well, you can subscribe to our bundle too. In both, please leave questions. If you're on podcast, you can record your question on Anchor. If you're on YouTube, please just type below. We'll get back to you. If it's a question for Jason, I make sure I'll give it to Jason and email him and we can get you that answer. My last ask, are you an entrepreneur? Do you know of an entrepreneur? please let us know who you are. Let's talk. Let's find out if you can share with us what your venture was. What can you tell entrepreneurs that they should be learning? Tips, tricks, insights, your challenges, everything. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jason. Thank you. And I'll see you in two weeks time.